Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by Curtis Holmes of Workfront and about episode number seven, I think, we had Kelsey on from Workfront. So I'm looking forward to learning more about Workfront and actually Curtis has seen Workfront transition, I, I believe. We, Curtis has been there for appro- approaching 12 years. So I think we're gonna have a look at sales ops um, from the perspective of a growing business um, and understanding what, how, how that's changed during Curtis's time. So Curtis, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here. And so you, when you first joined Workfront, Curtis, you weren't in sales operations, I believe. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be great to understand your journey kind of into sales operations, whether that came within Workfront or outside of Workfront. Yeah, sure. So I started in finance. Um, I, mm-hmm. I studied finance in school and, and always thought that I would work in a, the finance department for my entire career. Um, I started at Workfront being the financial analyst. Uh, and back then, Workfront was uh, small enough that we didn't have a sales operations team, and the finance uh, function kind of took care of some of that stuff. So we ran pipeline analytics, and we did comp plans, and we uh, were really involved in the forecasting and things like that. And, and I did that from the finance chair. And as the company quickly, grew... So please, quickly, just to jump in, um, when you say it was too small... Uh, could you give me a rough idea, like how many salespeople you had at that point? So it was back in 2008, right? Yeah, uh, there was probably 10 salespeople. Cool. Got it. Yeah. Um, and there was 60 employees total when I started yeah. at Workfront. Um, and so, you know, as the company grew um, within that uh, financial analyst position, I started to focus more and more on the sales side. And uh, there was an opportunity to leave finance and start the sales operations team here at Workfront. And uh, And it was a great transition. And if I think about it now, um, I don't ever want to work for a finance department ever again. Uh, Yeah. Sales ops. And uh, it's yeah. yeah. So it was a it was a it was a great opportunity to come and and start that journey at sales here creating sales ops. Got it. And uh, what number of reps did Workfront decide it was a good idea to now have a separate department? Uh, we probably had around 20 sales reps at that cool. time. Um, I think they could have done it earlier, but because they had the support uh, from finance, they waited in a little bit, maybe too long. Got it. And was that, was that you, like, did that decision to create that come from you or did that come from somewhere else in the business? Um, it came from the sales leader. So the sales leader requested me more of my time, uh, wanted me full time because of the value that we were bringing to that individual. Got it. So he was like, Curtis is crucial to the growth of my sales team. Can we bring him over? Absolutely. Got it. And so you were the first sales ops resource at Workfront. Yes. Amazing. Okay, cool. And then just so we have perspective today, approximately how many reps are we and how many people in the sales ops team? Yeah, so uh, we now have 130 sales reps. Wow. Um, with, and then we also support another 40 uh, SDRs. Um, and so that's the, the overall function that we support. Uh, and there's 10 of us in the, in the sales operations team today. Amazing. Uh, this is going to be super. I also have the RFP team that reports up to me at this time, who is responsible for all security questionnaires and documents and stuff like that. And and so that's an additional four individuals that are on the team. Got it. So you've seen the sales team grow from 10 to 130 in 11 years. Correct. What the, if you had to sum up that journey in like a sentence, (laughs) <laughs> how, how would you sum that up <laughs> madness no um <laughs> i uh you know if i had to sum up that that journey um it's interesting i feel like i've worked for five different companies um you know people always say i can't believe you've been at the same company for 12 years um but really it seems like such different companies because we approach things so differently at different points within within the growth um, and so I would say constant change is, is what really comes to mind. 
um, the way we run operations today is very different than how we were running operations when there was 20 uh, sales reps. Um, Got it. Our, our need to document and our need to, uh, you know, go through larger uh, processes to, to create change and things like that is just so different than when you're the small company. Um, so change would be the word I, I would use. Got it. Um, and the current sales ops tech stack as it stands today. Yeah. So obviously salesforce.com is our, is our number one tool. Uh, and we use a lot of features within that, um, including, you know, Salesforce CPQ and that type of stuff. Um, we use zoom info and discover org, uh, for understanding our contacts and our accounts and getting account information. Um, we have LinkedIn sales navigator. Um, is is a major tool for us and then uh, we also use Groove uh, for which is kind of creating sequences uh, scheduling that type of stuff those, I would say those four are four main points four main uh, parts of the tech stack got it and is going back to Salesforce is the data quality within Salesforce something that sits within your team or is it someone else? Okay. And yeah. is there someone specific in your team who looks at that? We do. So we're really lucky at, at um, Workfront because we have a whole team dedicated to data. And so there's four individuals in the U.S. Uh, and another four people in Poland that I actually didn't count as part of the team. But we use uh, some contractors in Poland to help us. And so every time an account is created by a sales rep, I have a team that reviews the account. Uh, we go through an annual cleanup process for all of our active customers, as well as all, all, as a, all of our target prospects to make sure we have you know, the right headquarter address and email and uh, employee count and industry and all of those key, uh, those key things that we're tracking. We have a whole team dedicated to making that happen. And the goal there is we're trying to do better at territory creation. So that's, that's the pitch that we use to justify having a team like this, is we want to build 130 great territories. And in order to do that, we have to have a really strong database that we can trust. The other things that are critical for this team is that they are responsible for um, account scoring. So what are the accounts that are a better fit for us, as well as account potential? So how much uh, dollars do we think each account is worth? And then using those uh, metrics, we're able to create uh, 130 great territories for 130 reps to be successful. And so that's the justification of having a whole team focused on data is we believe that's what leads into building great territories. Got it. I mean, your reps must absolutely love you. You have eight people responsible for making sure that all of the information they're working from is like tip top. They, right. yeah, they, they must come into your morning every come into your office every morning and th thank you for this. <laughs> Although somehow I sense that maybe they're not. Um, yeah, they don't know how spoiled they are. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I bet there's reps in Workfront who have never worked for another business, and then they're going to go out and then and they're going to be horrified by the yeah. quality of data they might have to work with. Yeah, um, and you know, it's it's a never-ending project. It never stops. There's always stuff to clean, and it's always changing. And there's acquisitions every single day that you have to keep track of. Um, but we're really proud of our database. Um, I would put it up against anyone out there. Uh, it's a really strong database. So. Got it. Now, my next question is about productivity, but I guess what we just discussed is kind of like the core driver of making the rest product productive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would say for me, uh, it's about um, keeping things simple. So I, I am passionate about simplicity. And I just think, you know, complexity is the enemy of execution. You make things too complex and a rep doesn't use it. And so we're not trying to add all this complexity into the process. In fact, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to keep things as simple as possible, get what we need, but allow it to be easy. Um, when I think about my team, our commander's intent, the thing that we focus on, focus on is we believe that the most important thing we can do is to provide the uh, is to both provide the tools the data the motivation and support needed for reps to hit their company goals and so if you think about that do they have the data that they need 
to be successful? Do they understand the metrics? Do they have the tools? Is the tech stack in place and is it efficient? Um, are they motivated? Do they have the right comp plan, SPIFs put in place that keeps them motivated? And then are they getting the support they need from onboarding and training and that type of stuff? And if they have the tools and the data and the motivation and support they need, uh, we feel like we're accomplishing our job and allowing reps to be successful. Got it. So I, I took five things there. So data, metric, tools, motivation, and support slash training. Correct. Like the, cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I always say tools, data, motivation, support. So those four. Tools, data. Okay. Yeah. So data is metrics basically. Correct. Um, so would you say they're like the four pillars of sales ops? Those are the four pillars of sales ops. That is what we build everything around. And every time we set our annual goals or our quarterly goals as a sales ops team, we are always asking the question, are we providing the sales team with the tools, the data, the motivation, support that they need? And which, which pillar does that fit in? And how are we uh, accomplishing our commander's intent, our main purpose? Got it. I mean, that makes things very simple. Um, okay, awesome. Moving on. And now I'd like to talk about working with reps and how you can get them to do something that you might want them to do, however simple it may be, uh, but in a way that's effective that gets them to buy in. Like how, how do you guys go about doing that? Yeah. Again, some simplicity is key. Uh, you know, if you, if you ask, if you have too many required fields in Salesforce, it's going to hurt your data. Um, I've always had a belief that the fewer required fields you get, you, you have, the better the data. Um, and so we do try to keep it simple and hopefully build a trust with, within the sales uh, organization that they, that they understand that we're trying to do that. And when we roll out a new tool, when we roll out a new process, that it's in their best interest. Um, we also do a good amount of training. And so we try to get involved in uh, team meetings. So we have 21 teams. Uh, there's 21 first line managers at, at Workfront. And we try to attend one of those meetings on a regular basis. Um, every team, at least quarterly, where we can help them understand what we're trying to accomplish. The other thing is um, the culture that I have always tried to build is a culture of we want to help the reps succeed, not we want to be a roadblock for the reps, right? And I think sometimes sales ops is viewed as a roadblock or the one person that always says no, um, where the opposite needs to be true. It needs to be a, a function that you can turn to to get um, help and actually help you succeed. Um, and so that's the culture that we try to, to build as, as much as we can. I think that helps us roll out new tools. It helps us roll out new uh, objectives and, and get the buy-in necessary. Um, the last thing I'll say is um, for anything to be effective, uh, the first line managers have to have the buy-in. And so before we roll out anything, I always, uh, we have a manager's call where I meet with the 21 first line managers and make sure that they are comfortable with anything that we roll out and uh, ask for their support uh, in helping it to be successful. And, and when we take that approach, I feel like it makes a big difference. Got it. Awesome. Now, moving on to the sales forecasting process, I assume you guys have a pretty robust process for that in place. Sure. So uh, we, we hold a forecast call uh, every other week. Um, and uh, we, it's, a, it's a long day for, for me and for the EVP of sales. We run that call. Um, and each first line manager comes in and, and it's a 15 minute call with each of them. And, uh, we do wow. it through Salesforce. And so every opportunity has to be identified as a committed opportunity, a best case opportunity, or just a pipeline opportunity. And so that way with a simple report, we can full report that says, here's our committed deals. Here's our best case deals. And here's a pipeline that we're not committing. Um, and uh, the, the, the meeting kind of comes in where they give us their commit, they give us their best case, um, and then we talk about what deals have you committed that you're a little bit nervous about, that have a little bit of uh, hair on them. We talk about what are your best case that you're really excited about. So everyone gives us the number, and then we talk about three or four deals 
and uh, with hopefully the attitude of what can we do to help, who in the organization can pull in, how do we win this deal together? So is that 21 15 minute meetings? That is correct. Whoa. Yeah. And, that, and so that's every other, every other week. So what's 15 times 21? So too many. 300, 315 minutes, which is five hours, right? Back to right. back. Yep. Um, what can science write next? What can we do to help? Awesome. And then just to run over the, over the three categories. So commit, those are like, these are going to close. Best case yep. is we, these could close. Pipeline is not committing to anything. Correct. Got it. And that's for the next two weeks or for the quarter? That's for the quarter. They always give us their quarterly commit. Got it. Awesome. And then uh, on, on the off weeks, um, it, they're not as long. It's not a five hour meeting, but we, we talk to the leaders about pipeline. So where are you sitting with pipeline? What does your pipeline look like? And that's more looking at next quarter. So a forecast yeah. call is looking at current quarter. A pipeline call is looking at next quarter. Got it. Um, sales metrics. Now, if you could only measure one sales metric for the rest of your life, which would it be? Pipeline, by far. If in pipeline size. is the lifeline of sales. And if you can understand how much pipeline each sales rep needs, how much they have, and the quality of that pipe, which is the hard part to, to measure. Mm -hmm. It's easy to know how much they need by just looking at what their close ratio is. It's very easy to know how much they have, but it's about the quality. And the quality comes from certain activities that are being done, how long it's been in certain stages, how it's progressing. But if I have a good understanding of pipeline um, for every rep, then I, I know exactly what's going to happen throughout the, throughout the quarter. Got it. You, you, that's probably the fastest answer to that question I've had. Normally people are like, because if not, we, we, sometimes we provide questions ahead and we don't give that question, but you were like straight away, pipeline. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of conviction there. Yes. Um, and so you live and die by pipeline. And it's interesting. It is so clear the managers at Workfront who run a forecast culture and the managers who run a pipeline culture. And what I mean by that is there are managers who in their one-on-ones and their conversations with their reps are only talking about how do we close this deal? How do we close this deal? How do we close this deal? And the other managers are saying, how do we create more pipe? What accounts are you working with? What's, how, tell me how you're working with your SDR. Let's, let's build pipe. And the ones that are focused on pipeline are hitting their numbers, period. Because pipeline, you live and die by pipeline. And, and you have to focus on pipeline. And uh, the, closed will, the closed revenue will come if you have enough pipeline. Got it. And so are you guys are actively coaching managers to focus on this then? Yes. This is the number one. I would say this is by far the thing we focus on the most. Pipeline, pipeline, oh. pipeline. Got it. Awesome. And then final question is, who uh, in your whole sales ops career has educated you the most about this field? Yeah, uh, you did warn me on this question, and I actually was struggling a little bit with it. I, mm -hmm. I do reach out to other sales ops professionals uh, in, the, in the area, and uh, we talk often. But I would have to say that what's helped me the most is actually uh, doing more education on my own. Uh, listening to podcasts, reading articles, um, you know, being a part of some blogs. Um, so I'm active in, in my education. So I always try to read a couple articles every week uh, that I, from people that are in the industry. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I have owned my own education. Would be my Got answer. it. And is there just one, like either podcast, apart from this one, of course, or blog that you think is like valuable for other people to go and check out? Um, I like uh, Sales Benchmark Index. Uh, yeah. I read their blog every week. Um, that was, that's probably the, the one, the, the articles that I read more than any other. Comes Got from it. That, that we will link to that below. The other thing I did want to ask you about actually is Oplified. I believe yeah. you're building up a uh, organization you're creating. Could you share a little bit more about that? About that? Yeah, actually, absolutely. So Oplified is a, is a sales operations consulting firm that I created a couple of years ago. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a position right now where Workfront has a really strong sales operations team and we're, we're doing some really amazing stuff. And there's a lot of individuals that were reaching out to me wanting some advice and some, some guidance. And so I created a, a company called Oplified uh, where, I, where I help other organizations uh, scale their, their sales ops, help them with territory creation, with creating comp plans, uh, with the database, with salesforce.com administrative work, that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a passion of mine to help organizations to uh, make a difference. And it's been so rewarding to go in and with a little bit of, of time, a little bit of effort, uh, walk away with a company saying, holy moly, you made a huge difference for our sales team. We're so much more effective and we're so much more productive. Um, that's been really rewarding. So. Got it. And that's Oplified.com. We'll link to it below. Um, awesome. Curtis. So he, here's what I picked out. I loved your, your, your focus on data quality and, and the way you sold that to the organization is like, we need to create 130 awesome territories so our service people can work. Therefore, we need to invest in data quality. Um, then your focus on simplicity. Um, I like the culture part about instilling in the sales ops team that actually we're here to help not to hinder or get in the way of the salespeople. And then finally, I love the kind of regimented weekly call, one on pipeline and then one on the forecast um, that you do back to back uh, every, every week. Like that yeah. seems like a very rational, like solid way to keep managers accountable. Absolutely. Uh, and so with that, We'll finish, but Curtis, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for those insights. Absolutely. Thank you.